No fee trading has transformed the retail trading landscape, making it easier for everyday traders to get in. But a new paper out shows that there are hidden costs with free brokerage accounts, and it adds up to $34 billion a year. Joining us now, we want to bring one of the authors of that study, Christopher Schwartz. He's UC Irvine Professor of Finance and Faculty Director of the Center for Investment and Wealth Management. Professor Schwartz, it's great to see you. You and a group of your colleagues placing trades simultaneously. You did it with different brokers. You certainly saw a uh, varied outcome. The outcome really varied significantly. Explain to us exactly what you did and what you found. Uh, sure, so I think the, the easiest way is you, we, were, we were kind of testing something else um, and we we're using one broker and we decided we couldn't re run results just on one broker. So we set up a second broker and so we essentially placed the same trades at the same time for the same amount. Um, and the first day we did this, one broker lost $150 and the other broker made $12. Um, and we said, well, this, this looks kind of weird. Um, and so eventually we ended up having six different brokerage accounts. Um, and essentially every single day, there would be a huge variation in how much the six accounts made or lost just simply based on which account we were using, even though we were trading all the same stocks. And so that's kind of what we ended up finding is there's just a huge difference in execution between the six different brokers that we used. And then ultimately we tried to see how much of that was related to the payment for order flow they're getting from uh, market centers. So modern brokers, what they do is instead of sending your trade to the New York Stock Exchange or to the NASDAQ, they send them to these dark pools, which are typically Citadel or Virtue or other places like that. Um, and essentially what we found is the amount the broker is getting paid for the trades really had no relation to how much execution you're, you know, what price execution you're getting. And there's really no way for you to know ahead of time uh, which broker was giving you the best price execution on these trades and which broker was giving you the worst execution. So then Christopher, once people have this information now that you've, you've brought to light, what can they do? Is there anything that they can do differently or perhaps any sort of recourse now that they've seen this divergence in the difference from these platforms? Uh, sure, so I think it's important to note that not, none of the brokers or the platforms, there's no one breaking any regulations here. Um, so you know, there's something called best execution by the SEC and that involves a lot of different um, criteria. It's not just what kind of price execution you're getting, but you know, how fast the trade goes through and some other things. Um, and the second thing is, is that there's limits on the prices that brokers can charge you. Um, so this is called the bid and the ask or the bid ask spread. And so the broker can't give you worse pricing than the bid or the ask. And none of the brokers were giving us worse pricing than that. So. Uh, in terms of recourse for investors, there's there's no recourse because there's no rules breaking being broken, no regulations being broken. Um, if people are really interested in getting the best execution, um, you know it's important to know a we're we're looking at market trades here and and we're comparing other features, right? So maybe you want to be on a platform you can trade crypto and and stocks, or maybe you want to be on a platform where you can trade uh, bonds and and stocks. Um, but certainly, you know, if you if you want to go looking in, in the paper, we, we name names in terms of which brokers are giving us the best and worst execution. Christopher, you said how much the brokers were being paid had no indication as to what the returns would be. Was there a common thread among those that did deliver the higher returns? Um, so so just to give you an example, uh, you know, if we rank brokers from best to worst, one through six, uh, the number one broker got paid for their trades, right? So they actually got paid to send trades to market centers. Um, the third best broker got paid nothing. Um, and the fifth best broker also got paid nothing. So in other words, you know, the first broker, the second broker both got paid order flow. The third one didn't, the fourth one did, the fifth one didn't. So you can just see in rank order, um, in theory, the two best brokers were brokers that got paid to send their trades to market centers. Um, so really kind of the relation between paid order flow and, and, and price execution was essentially zero um, if you look across the brokers that we had. Um, so that, that was kind of the surprising finding uh, as we ran the paper. Chris, can you share with us who topped the list just in terms of where, where you were, were getting the best return from those brokerages? Um, so uh, as an academic, we're trying to talk about kind of the, the major point of the paper, which is paid order flow doesn't make a difference. But um, given it's public information, and I'm sure all your listeners will just go open the paper anyway. Um, so the best broker in terms of market trades only, looking at market trades only, was TD Ameritrade. They were number one. And, and Chris, real quick on transparency, what specifically do you think should be disclosed to provide more transparency to the retail investor out there? 
Yeah, so, so just to, to summarize what's available now, right? So each broker has to file something called an SEC Form 606. So on that form, they tell you two pieces of information. So one is it tells you which market centers, aka Virtue, Citadel, et cetera, that they're routing the trades to. And the second one is how much paid order flow they're getting to route the trades. So those are the two pieces of information the 606 provides. So essentially, you know where your trades on average are going and you know how much they're getting paid. Um, then there's something called SEC Form 605. And what the 605 does is it tells you what kind of price execution the, the, the market centers are giving you. So i.e., if you put in a trade of Apple and Apple trade goes to Citadel, it'll tell you on average what kind of pricing Citadel gives you. The problem is, is that there's no price execution data at the broker level. In other words, what Citadel gives you is just an average of the price execution will give you on any Apple trade. Um, and essentially what we found is the market centers are systematically giving brokers different pricing. And so really to kind of solve this issue where individuals know what kind of price execution they're getting at, at, at different, um, you know, sorry, what, what price execution consumers are getting different brokers, we essentially need like form 606 to be at the broker level. So in other words, Citadel tells you exactly what kind of pricing you get at TD versus Robinhood versus uh, E-Trade versus Fidelity. And then consumers have a much better way to make a comparison about what kind of price execution that they're getting. Boy, a really interesting and rather frustrating story for investors out there. Christopher Schwartz, UC Irvine, appreciate you being here. Thank you.